Coming to you live from the Business Radio X studio, it's Franchise Marketing Radio. Brought to you by IDS, an award-winning digital marketing agency that delivers integrated marketing solutions for franchisers, franchisees, and franchise development teams. Learn why over 75 brands depend on IDS's team of dedicated marketers and client service professionals to deliver a strong ROI on their marketing investment. Go to IDSFranchiseMarketing.com for a complimentary digital audit and consultation. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Franchise Marketing Radio. I'm your host, Rob Ganley. And today, like every other day that we meet, we're going to dive into the heart of franchising success. Today is no different. I have the founder. I want to introduce Tim Kahn, the founder of I- Image One Facility Solutions. Tim, welcome to the show. I know your journey kind of goes back a little bit. Not everybody is a founder. Not everybody goes back as far as you in terms of their journey and entrepreneurship. So tell us a little bit about how this all came to be. Hey, thanks for having me, Rob. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. And yeah, my journey did start a long time ago. And it started way back when I was 14 years old. My parents owned a two-story office building. And uh, I was a freshman in high school. Their building needed to be cleaned. And I said, you know what? This is something I can do for some some extra money, you know, just to have money to spend hanging out with my buddies or taking a girl out on a date. Wanted to start saving for a car. And uh, it was something that was simple. It was, you know, it was it was easy to, to get started and ran the business through high school. And, you know, as soon as I got my driver's license, started to, to grow the business and uh, continued to grow it all through college. And all of a sudden it was a real business. And the, the, there was no reason to go out and you know chase a nine to five job because I had a thriving business that uh, th- that was taking care of me and uh, got married shortly after college, so I was taking care of my wife, and uh, it, it just made sense to keep growing it. I love that. I mean, I I remember back to high school. I, this is one of those things, and probably for the audience too, where you know. Like you got to be true to yourself, right? So like in high school and in college, I remember some of my buddies and one of them in particular had a great teacher and design business and he was a really good artist. So, but I, you know, it was the same kind of thing. You know, he started in high school, made some money in college and I, I haven't kept up with how far that went for him. I don't think it went as far as it did for you. However, I remember just having a, just so much respect and thinking, I just admire that, right? So what did I do? I went off and got a job. No, and so like by the time I hit my thirties, I'm like, this doesn't work for me, right? So being sort of true to like that, who you are early on, it there are clues early on. I think is the point. Not everybody has that path that opens up like yours, but you got to be a certain kind of person. And so that's a great story. So tell me a little bit about, you know, I know, you know Image One, uh, you have a brand, you know, you have values tied into that brand, and you obviously have this long history that started with you in high school, right? Tell me a little bit about how your values have evolved and you poured that into the brand and what that represents to you. Kind of define that for us. Yes. Yeah, so, so I, I mean, every company talks about core values and, you know, and what does that mean? And really our, our values, our mission statement, um, everything revolves around our, our franchise owners. You know, our mission statement is, is to, you know, train our franchise owners to be the best that they could be, no matter that where they would go, but treat them with such value. I'm sorry, treat them with such respect and give them such value that they would never choose to leave. And really, that's that's the foundation. That's our vision. That's what we do um, in dealing with our franchise owners. And I think that really says says it all. You know, and that that couples along with our, our core values. You know, that are you know honesty and integrity and um, uh, communication, um, having fun. Um, you know, the, the the typical things that you want to see in in any business. Um, and, and again, as on the corporate side, we we revolve around that. We try to bring our franchise owners into that and try to instill those things into them so that they can that they can build successful businesses um, to to provide for their families and the the families of all the people that work for them. Wow, there's no small impact in what you just said. Having a network, right, and you're all together, and there's families involved, and you know, it just impacts a lot of lives, employees. So, but tell me a little bit about, let's frame the business a little, as for the audience too. So describe the business a little bit. So a local operation, kind of get into the description of the kind of operation it is. And then also, if you could help the audience understand, and me understand too, a little deeper, what's unique? I know you're in a business, you have competitors, 
And you probably have your angle and your your unique way of approaching things. So help us understand that and start just with the how the business works and what kind of business it is, and then why is it unique? No, it's, it's a janitorial service, and you know a, a lot of people when they're looking at franchising, um, you know they go out they're looking for the 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 next greatest thing, the the new thing that came out. You know, they're looking for um, the the greatest fad, the the new trend, and the problem with those is is the pendulum swings back and forth. And, you know, at one point, people are don't care about health and they're buying all this crazy fast food that is fattening and they don't care about it. And then the pendulum swings back the other way. And those types of restaurants kind of close up and go away. But then there's people that are on a health kick. So all kinds of healthy restaurants open up and then the pendulum swings kind of back the other way. And, and it does that. And if you look at different brands that have come and gone over the years, there's been a lot of them um, that happens, um, you know, whether whether it's, you know, the donuts or it's coffee or it's, you know, um, like I said, health stuff, you know, uh, smoothies, you know, there, there's all these different things that come and go. And the, the things that are really tried and sure are to me, those are the franchises that you want to look for. Um, if, if you get into a, a B2B service franchise, it's going to be there for a long time. You know, we do janitorial. So obviously I'm partial to janitorial. I'm partial specifically to image one, but anyone that's looking at a franchise, I think it's really important for them to, to really do their due diligence and figure out what's the right franchise for them. What's calling their name? What's what's the thing that they're interested in that's going to going to bring them to where that where they want to go. Um, and you, you know, the guy that buys a sub sandwich shop, I don't think it's because he has a passion to make sub sandwiches. Maybe, yeah, maybe, probably well, not. And so, I feel like this is a great segue because you were talking earlier with me about uh, a book, right, that you just put together, and I feel like. This is exactly the point, right? They're, they're, it's more about looking at the business model. Well, one aspect is you running the business day to day. What does that feel like and look like day to day? But also when we think about businesses and the success of them and the longevity of them and the, the quality of them, it, it's more about other details that sometimes are overlooked, right? When you're thinking about the fad, you're like the sexy objects and you know the, the latest thing, right? And you're missing the the beauty of the business model. That, that's where I get geeky. Like I start to like, think about like the revenue stream and, and sticky revenue stream and 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 a high ticket and high margin and 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 you know you can still have a life and and build teams and and scale and so these are ideas that to me are beautiful right that that's more important than a fab but tell me a little bit about share it with the audience about the book and i think it relates to some of this thinking where it's like like focus on the fundamentals focus on what works but tell me more tell us more about that so i wrote the book a couple of years ago cuz we would go to franchise shows we'd talk to people about franchise opportunities and we we would see these people that walk in and they're walking into a, a franchise show for the first time and they walk in and you can see they're like a deer in the headlights. They're just, they, they, they they're shocked because literally there's two, 300 brands that are in that room. And that's only about 10% of all the franchises that are available. There's, there's about, I think at last count, there's about 3,600 active franchises that are, that are selling franchises in the United States. So if you're trying to narrow it down to the one that's right for you, it takes a lot of work. And I knew looking at these people when they're walking through the, the trade show that they're struggling. And you know they, they'd walk up and down every aisle. And, and by the end of the show, every trade show you go to, I don't care if you're going to buy a car or a boat or you know, an RV or you know if it's, a, if it's a home improvement show, whatever it is, the minute you walk in the door, they hand you a bag. And by the time you walk out, what do you have? A bag, a bigger bag. A bag full of like 300 <laughs> brochures. Yeah. And and if if you're like me, if you're like most people, what happens is you get home and you've got this big bag full of stuff and you're so overwhelmed, what do you do with it? Yeah. Nothing. Because you don't know what to do. You don't know where to begin. And I, I saw this time after time at the franchise shows and I thought, you know what? People need help navigating through this process to kind of make it easier for them. So I, I wrote the book a couple of years ago and it ended up being a, an Amazon bestseller. So it's, it's cool. called no new ideas. And so if you, if you, you know, go on Amazon, you search for no new ideas and you put in my name, Tim Khan, you'll, you'll find it. It'll pop right up. Um, cool. so, but it's, it's no new ideas. And the, the, the whole concept of it is setting yourself up to buy a franchise, how to navigate through that process, what to do to, to figure out what's the right franchise for you, 
how to do your due diligence. It explains what the, the franchise disclosure document is, the FDD, um, you know, walks you through step by step all the uh, all the different sections of the FDD so that you kind of have an understanding of what it is because it's it's very overwhelming um, for someone that, that's never seen an FDD. They can be 200 to 300 pages and it's a legal document and it, it, it can be really scary. Um, so having someone kind of explain all the different sections just in plain English is something that we do when people come to us, but a lot of people don't have that advantage. So I included that in the book. So basically it takes someone from the very early steps through the whole process of, you know, do you want a home-based business or do you want a brick and mortar business? Do you want a business to consumer, you know, B to C, or do you want business to business, B to B? What's the type of business you want to be in? You know, you, you could get into home health care. You could get into um, working with, with kids. You could work with um, people's pets. Uh, you could be in the service industry and B2B like we are in janitorial. You could service pools. You can spray for mosquitoes. You could do landscape. There's so many different options. And again, people just get so overwhelmed that they do nothing. So the book kind of guides them and helps them along that path so that they know what they're going to go through and it, and it helps them um, figure out what it is that they want. Yeah, you know, I mean, and that's, you know, it's, it's funny when you were talking about the trade show. Um I'm just thinking like of the the traditional job market, right? If if you're in a the majority of, of people have jobs, and if and a lot of them come from the corporate world and different things, and want to start a business, right? And we know that's a big pool of folks every year looking. And but when you said that, I was thinking you go from maybe you get three job offers if you're good, if you're a rock star, to you have three hundred choices. <laughs> so right. and you do have to have the skills and there are there are requirements for franchises so it's not just pick one or anything but it, it you know it's certainly um a different approach like you have to you have to have a methodology to figure it out because it's just too much you couldn't possibly even vet probably 20 would be too way too right. much would be too many you know so and, and you, you, really you may find that. the franchise that you think is perfect for you and they may think you're not the perfect franchisee for them. It goes exactly. both ways, like dating. You right. might know that you have the ideal woman that you want to marry. And when you find her, she's like, yeah, you're not my type. Right, it's your bad. <laughs> so, and it, franchising can, can be the same way. You may say, hey, this, this is really where I think I need to be. And the franchisor looks at you and says, I love the fact that you have the passion for this, but we don't think you're a good fit. And they, they may say no to you. Um, mm -hmm. that, that, it does happen because they don't want to – set someone up in their system and set someone up in their business that's not going to have the same success that they like to see among their franchise owners. Yeah, no doubt. No, it's, it's, it, 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 you know, on one hand you can pursue any of them, but on the other, it is like an interview and a, a process of getting to know each other. And, and you know what? That's what makes it successful. That's why I, you know, I said to you earlier, before we got on air here that, you know, what I love about franchising is, is it's because it's that way. It starts there. It starts with the franchisor, really helping you figure out what's best for you because by doing that they help you figure out if a spot is with them or maybe it's a spot with someone else and so the right. process is really beneficial no matter what which is why i love it so let's just jump into a little bit about the franchisee side first and then we'll get into you as the uh, you know looking at your growth plans but so a franchisee when they get started in your business let's look at that first one to two years i know that's an important you know, and, and there's some marketing that has to be done, maybe a launch process and training. And I know for a lot of people, they're probably wondering right now, thinking, what, what what can I possibly do? Like, what does this look like? Is this even something that could be on my radar? What's that look for you? And I know for you, as we just said, I mean, success is important, getting people started quickly, right? But that first year or two is critical for all, all brands. So tell us, break that down for us. How does that, starting with how you recruit all the way through that, that uh, onboarding process. How does that look for somebody? Sure. So, so one, once we find someone, we walk them through our process. We've got like an eight or ten step process that they go through. It's, it's getting to know them, making sure it's a good fit. Um, they need to know us and be comfortable with us. We need to know them, get comfortable with them. Then we do a, a, an application that they you know they fill out um, kind of to get the background information, make sure they're financially viable to to, to do this. It's, it's like if you buy a home, you can say you want to buy a million dollar home, but if you don't have the capital to buy a million dollar home, the bank's not going to, they're not going to give you that loan. And so, so your franchise is the same way. We want to make sure that the, the people that we're going to partner with 
are well capitalized. Um, the, the last thing we want them to, to be in a position is where it's hurting them financially when they're trying to open up a business. We don't want that. We want to make sure they have enough cash reserves to to go through those first few months of startup, to go through the the first few months that they're they're paying that those marketing uh, spends to 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 do digital marketing and get the websites all set up and running and you know do all that type of stuff because there are expenses that you have up front. Um, right. So the, so for us, our, our franchise fee is is twenty nine seven fifty, which isn't isn't a huge well, number by any means. Yeah. It's, it's one of the low cost, easy to get into franchise models. Um, but then, of course, on top of that, you've got other other expenses that go along with that because you have to get insurance for your business. You need to buy the equipment. You need to um, pay for your your time to go up to Chicago for training. So you basically, your, your airfare and your, your room and board, the training is included as part of your franchise. Um, but all, all those things. And then, then the, the first six months of marketing. And if you're going to um, hire employees at the outset, you need to make sure that you're you're well funded to do that. Or if you're going to do do everything yourself in the beginning. Um, so you need about fifty thousand um, dollars to to get started. Um, that, you know, that's the minimum that we'll say that you need to have in liquid capital. Um, if you bought more than one territory, that could double. You know, it depends on what you're what you're looking at. But all that with every franchise, that's all included in the in the franchise disclosure document. All the right. all the numbers have to be in there. So if you're looking at a franchise or it's image one or somebody else's, all those numbers should be provided for you. If they're not in there, that's like a major red flag. Those have to be provided for you. If they're not run because something's not Something's not right. With all, and I, I will attest to that as more of a consultant in the industry. But I know you guys, you're you're regulated. It's it's it, there's attorneys. There's you you know if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, that is a huge red flag. Right, <laughs> so, right, right. So, yeah, yeah. If we're not following the guidelines, we will be shut down. Uh, that's uh, right. It's in the in the industry as a whole, that that's the way it's set up, and it's it's all for consumer protection. So I get it. It, it makes a lot of sense that the FTC regulates and that the registration states that require registration um, do their their part to make sure that the franchisors are doing what they say they're supposed to do for the franchisees. It's it's a good uh, a good balance for for that purpose because it protects the consumer. So it's it's, it's it, it creates a, um, a a some some a safety net for them when they're buying a franchise. So well, I mean, I, I told you earlier. I'm uh, you know obviously we work in the industry and and I'm. I'm Obviously, I'm a big believer, right? I mean, that's what, but I mean, I don't, you know, you said something earlier about having the right liquid capital um, and, and being prepared. So like, what I think one of the biggest reasons people fail is that they just put themselves in situations they're not built for. Like, you know, mentally, if you don't have the capital to withstand those first couple of years in any venture, you start to play tricks with your head, right? And it's like, it, it rarely is about skills or abilities or, you know, it's about following a process and staying on point. And sometimes your mind plays tricks with you when the numbers or the financials aren't there. And that's why it's so important. That's why what you said meant more than just laying it out. And it's more like we're protecting you. We're putting right. you in a situation where you have more than enough runway because we want you to be successful because we're successful. And that's what I love about franchising. Anyway, I think that's something to be thought about because I think a lot of people usually don't have enough runway and that's usually what ends up happening. And and that pressure starts long before the end of the runway, right? In your head. Yeah. So yeah, I love the fact good. that you say runway. You yeah. know, because a, a, a mile of road will take you a mile. Yeah. But a mile of runway will take you anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. I love that. You know, in your book by chance. I might yeah. be it sometimes. I love it. <laughs> That's so, very true. So, so and, if, and, if we find the person that they're the right fit, they fill out their application, everything is good. We we come to an agreement, they sign their franchise agreement after the waiting period and all that good stuff. Yeah. We determine what, what their territory uh is gonna be, where it's at. We've got a lot of territory available. We started in the Chicago market. Chicago is pretty much sold out. And we, we've got a, a good number of franchise owners there that are doing extremely well, very successful. Uh, we've got a, a three in, that are in Florida, one in Colorado, a couple in Texas. Um, but really, the, there's there's so much room for growth in, in so many great areas um, that really we're, we're open just about every place across the country. The only places that we're not uh, registered right now is California and Hawaii, and we're not going to register in either of those two states at this time. Um, but yeah. when, once someone comes to an agreement, we find their territory, we sign their agreements, then they come up to Chicago for a week of training and, um, th they do everything from A to Z and, and it's a long week. It's, it's from, you know, early in the morning until 
late in the evening. And they do everything from learning about the software that we utilize. We have all proprietary software that runs on an iPad. Um, we teach them about bidding and estimating and doing operations, doing inspections with their clients. We teach them about customer service. So we do everything with them in the office as well as bring them out in the field so that they can see it all in the real world. And then they go out with a franchise owner that's there locally in the evenings and they understand what the crew is doing at night, what they're doing in cleaning. Because the reality is in the beginning, you're going to do some cleaning. If you say you'll never pick up a mop, then you know what? We're not going to sell you a franchise. So the goal is ultimately in the first you know six months to drop the mop, only pick up the iPad and go out and do sales, 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 do operations, follow up with your clients, that type of stuff. But in the beginning, you're going to do some cleaning. And if someone calls in sick, you don't just say, oh, my employee's sick today. No one's going to no one's going to clean that account. Well, no, if someone's sick and you don't have an operations manager to do that work, you got to go out and you got to do that cleaning. You know, so so you do do some cleaning, but the, the goal is to get you out of that role as quickly as possible. You staff up, hire those people. You're doing the sales. You're doing the operations. So after that week of, of training in Chicago, then we schedule uh, a week of training in your market. So we'll come back to wherever it is that you live, wherever it is that your franchise is going to be, and we'll do operations and sales training in your market. We'll go with you door to door cold calling. We'll go with you to uh, chamber events. Uh, we'll typically set up a, a ribbon cutting with the chamber um, so we can really launch your, your business. Um, we'll do that again for a second week. Um, uh, and then the third week of training, it, we come back to your market again, usually a month later, sometimes two months later, depends on what your schedule is, what your needs are. And again, we'll do more sales with you. We'll do more operations with you or work with the crews that now you've hired um, to make sure they're working efficiently and things like that. Um, and that's how we help you grow your business. All right. I mean, and and just as I'm absorbing the description, I, I think of as, as a marketer, I think of, because I can assess what, you know, what would be a harder mountain to climb? Would it be an easier mountain to climb? You know, like there's the, the way at least I look at it from a growth and a marketing and sales point of view. And I love the idea of B2B because when you can, I'm just kind of going to, is a question, but it's also an assumption a little bit in that, that you go out, you get a client base, right? There's mechanisms to do so chambers, there's community outreach. And what you could maybe fill in some details on the best ways you guys connect with other businesses. But once you are connected with some of these accounts, my guess is that they're very sticky as long as you deliver. And I know that I, I know I spent some time on your website and you do stress customer service. I mean, you stress blocking and tackling that might seem common sense, but is the thing that keeps the revenue stream going, right? So give me a little bit more input on that. Like, tell me, I know there's, you, you probably have a great answer for all that, but this is, I'm looking from the outside saying, I bet you these accounts will stay for, for, for the lifetime if you take care of them, right? But tell me more about this whole B2B model and how that, yeah, that works out. You're 100% right. That's that's the key. It's all about customer service and you will have those clients long-term. We have clients that have been with us for, um, I think going back to 2004, four or five is our, our earliest client. Um, so you, we're, at, we're at the 20 year mark. Um, and that's not typical in this industry. If you look at our competitors, that's not what that's not what is happening. Um, but the reason we're able to do that is because we do deal with a high, high level of customer service. Um, we don't underbid the jobs. We bid it the way it's meant to be bid so that we can do the job that needs to be done. Because what happens is a, a lot of companies, if they go in and they say, you know what, we can do it for 20% less than your current service. Okay. For how long can you do it for 20% less? Right. Or you start cutting the corners and then they're delivering 20% less cleaning. So we had a long-term client um, two years ago that um, they had a change in their, their management and management decided to make some changes within. And um, they called us up and they said, hey, we've got a, um, a competitive quote here. Uh, for about 50% of what you're charging us. And I thought to myself, well, that's not a competitive quote. <laughs> they, they can't possibly do what they say they're going to do for that price. It's just, it's it's impossible. Right. And uh, within about six months, we were back in there. And um, they said, you know what? The new management said that they had to try this. And they're not going to try to shake things up anymore, at least when it comes to cleaning, because they saw 
level of service that just went down, 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 down. Mm. And uh, when we went back in, then they had to pay us to bring it back up to the to a level 10, um, yeah. you know, from like a level four. So they ended up paying us more, um, but we got the got the account back. And so that's what it's all about. It's about customer service. It's about doing what you say you're going to do. And, yeah. and and yes, you'll you'll have those clients for a really, really long time. Um, and, and, you know, our recommendation to our franchise owners is always build that relationship, um, you know, three deep. So that if there is a management change, you know, a lot of other people there. If you go three deep and three wide, you know, like nine people that are your uh, your people that are really going to work on your behalf. They're going to speak up for you if there's a new manager in, in place so that it's going to be really difficult for them to make a change. And um, and th that's that's really one of the one of the key elements of the business. Um, we developed the software to to do inspections um, in the industry, we develop the software to do uh, the proposals so that it's uniform throughout the system. And, and again, that's that's really a, a key dif differentiator from um, all of our uh, competition out there. You know, most times people go out and they're they're going out there literally with a, a legal pad and you know writing down notes. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but there's a better way. You know, we developed a, a, an iPad app back in 2011, and we've been using that now for 13 years. You know, back in the day, people were like, oh, my gosh, you've got an iPad. That's amazing. Now it's like, you know, I can't believe you guys are the only company that came in to give us a quote that's doing it on your iPad. I don't get it. I just don't understand why the technology is not kept up in our industry. I'm glad it hasn't because it's a huge benefit for us and for our franchise owners. But it's just amazing how archaic some of our competitors are and they they just they don't change anything so it's it's it makes it easy to to go out and put up a proposal against them when we show the technology that we're providing we show the communication that's all digital and it's online and these other companies come in and they show them a a, a three ring binder and show them a logbook and say look you can write us write a note to our our client pull your pen uh, well, I, you know, I love it. I love it. I'm a B2B guy. I mean, I, I was raised on B2B. I, I hear, I hear sticky revenue. I hear uh, simple, simple tactics, simple strategies that are, are work that are, you know, like having multiple relationships. And these are buildings too. Like you do a lot of, a lot of commercial. It's all these different types of commercial. So right. what does that mean? Well, it means these are businesses with money. They got buildings. So like, that's the right prospect. I mean, there's other markets where it's harder to get that traction. It's harder to get that customer that does have budgets. And, and so now you have a market with customers with budgets. And, and, and then you go back to what I, when, when you were talking, I was thinking about, and I, I mentioned this a lot where I compare like Apple, right? Apple products and you look at their products and they're always more than everything else. Right. And even me as a guy who likes a lot of Apple products, um, I, 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 there's certain ones I'm just like, I'm not paying that. I don't want that product that much. But I say to myself, one of the reasons they're so good at what they do is they, they make sure they charge enough. And I think that's exactly what you're saying is like, you should know what it takes to do the right job. And, and to know that and make money doing that isn't as easy without the system and formula. And then the last thing I'll, I'll comment on is the, is the tech. I love tech. And you're right. And anyone listening, listen carefully. The competition isn't stepping up. That's your advantage. So you might want to think about that. That's a unique situation because I'm a, I'm a workflow guy. I'm a workflow guy. I'm a tech guy. You're not using technology because it's cool. You're using technology because it makes you faster. It's better, faster, cheaper. Right. And, you know, that's exactly what this is. It's a better process that's assisted by technology. And that's only going to be more important. And that's why being, you know, with someone like you that's clearly 20 years ahead, that's what we that's what you want is someone who's going to continue to look to innovate. So that's important. Um, so just looking ahead a little bit, um, you, you said you had a pretty, some pretty good territories available. Are there Are there states, areas that you're focused on? And I wanted to ask you, how do you approach marketing like as a franchise brand? What it, what do you find to be effective if you're saying we are targeting these certain states or areas, their priorities for us? What is sort of your approach? How do you handle marketing? What what seems to work for you to, to accomplish that? Yeah, so for, from a, a, a franchise recruitment standpoint, there's no bad area. Every every business needs cleaning and every community has a business. 
So every car dealership, every bank, every doctor's office, every dentist office, every health club, every condominium association, because they have hallways and you know laundry rooms and um and clubs and things, all of those places need to be cleaned. That's the beauty of our industry. That's the beauty of, of janitorial. It may not be glamorous, although if you look at a toilet, it's got some sleek lines of porcelain. So if you have that, you're looking, you can, you can find almost, it's almost as beautiful as a Corvette if you find the right toilet. But yeah, yeah. if you're looking for a glamorous business, no, this isn't it. But if you're looking for a business that's tried and true, that's going to be here yesterday, today, and tomorrow, this is a great industry. So we've always been a recession resistant industry because cleaning needs to be done, period. That's it. It has to be done. If it's not done, there's problems. And, you know, then when the pandemic hit, we realized that not only were we, recession resistant, but we were an essential business because cleaning had to be done. So the businesses that were allowed to stay open, um, some of them tripled their cleaning budget because if they closed because of the pandemic, that would impact their business so greatly. They said, you know what? We were paying $10,000 a month for cleaning before. We're going to pay $30,000 a month because it's that important. And the, the, the one client that did that, that tripled from 10 to 30, it was a steel manufacturing company. And um, they, they were a 24-7 operation. And they used to only have cleaning on one shift. They went to cleaning on all three shifts. They literally tripled their, their cleaning budget because they knew if they shut down, they would lose hundreds of millions of dollars. So for yeah. them to spend that extra money in cleaning was nothing. It, it meant absolutely nothing for them to do that. Um, but that again, that's that's the beauty of this business. It's something that's always needed. You know, as uh, there's economic turmoil right now. You know, people argue, are we or aren't we in a recession? Are we going into a recession? Or are we not going into a recession? I don't know. All I know is one thing for sure. Tomorrow, we're one day closer to a recession than we are today. Yeah. Because there's always one that's coming. Right. It might be a month, it might be in six months, it might be in six years, but it's coming. When is it it's coming? Cyclical. None of us yeah. know. But the reality is it'll be here. And we are a business that, um, although clients may say, you know what, we're having tough economic times, we're going to scale from five days down to three days, but they're not going to cut it out completely. But you look into like uh, B2, B2C, consumer businesses, people, when they're feeling it, stop going to restaurants. If they had someone that was cleaning their home, it's a luxury. They don't need to pay a service to clean their home. They can do it themselves. Um, but when it comes to a business, businesses still need to be cleaned. If they're going to mm -hmm. keep their doors open, they need to have a, a clean business. So it, it really um, it has been a great business throughout. Uh, I started in 1985. I think there's been four recessions um, between 85 and now. And we haven't been affected by a single one. We've continued to grow year after year after year. And uh, most businesses can't say that. And uh, so that that's that's great that our industry is is that resilient. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I thought of the pandemic I, before you brought it up. I'm like, I'm going to make sure because it was amazing to see that. Uh, but that mo your business model, yeah, was one of the one of the ones that probably benefited uh, from that situation. And hopefully we don't have another scenario like that. But it certainly was important for businesses and you know, it always is right. Even if times are tight and this is where your professionalism, your customer service, your technology locks that in. It's like, we're not looking there. That gets done. We're good. Let's cut over there. Right. I mean, it's, it's even in toughest of times would be one of the last things probably that they'd consider. Um, so that's beautiful, but that all goes into that all those decades of effort and learnings and getting better and stronger as you grow. So I wanted to kind of wrap things up with you. And uh, I know you wrote the book. So I think it's it, it's probably packed full of wisdom, right? But is there is there something you could leave with the audience? Just maybe one key uh, idea that you kind of circle back to a lot in the book or just, just in general for anyone that might be, uh, you know, approaching starting a business or if you want to frame it as a business that might want to expand through franchising. Either one. What what would you, what would some advice be? Oh, that, the, the, you, you asked me a lot of questions. <laughs> so so trying to, someone, try to keep it simple. If, if someone's looking to, to expand whatever business they have into a franchise model, it's a great it's a great model. But you have to understand that when you when you own a, a, a pizza place and then you become become a franchisor, you're no longer in the pizza business. Now you're in in this 
franchise business because you have to support people in doing that business that you're doing. So if you're someone that's looking to make that jump, great, but be cautious. Make sure you're really well funded to do that because it is very, 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 very expensive to to transition into that model. Um, you gotcha. need to be very well capitalized to make that happen successfully. Um, so that on that and you know that that would be my my big advice. Um, yeah. If you're someone that's that's looking for a franchise, whether it's Image One or whether it's you know a, a swim school or you know after school study, whatever it is you're looking to do, if you've really had this feeling about doing it, and you've had this feeling for a long time, just pull the trigger and do it. There, there's a Chinese proverb: the best time to plant an oak tree was 20 years ago. The second best, the second best time is today. Yes, yes. So if you want shade in your backyard and you plant a tree. You're going to have shade in 20 years yeah. and getting into business for yourself is the same. You know, if, if you didn't do it 20 years ago and you wish you would have do it today because you, you still have the rest of your life in front of you. But what you don't want to do is two, three, five years down the road and say, you know, I should have done it in 2024 and I missed the opportunity. You know, if you're thinking about it, you're serious about it, figure it out and get it done. Because that that will give you um, the, the 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 chance to to grow a franchise business uh, long term. Yeah, you know, it really is just about at some point taking the action because that's where the learnings are. That's where you really start to open up the doors and see things differently and move forward. And uh, could you leave the name of the book again? And then also, if if someone wants to uh, reach out and talk to you and your team about potentially looking in or just learning about franchising and, and image one's angle, how would they reach out to you? So your website so, and your book so again. The, the book again is No New Ideas and it's available on Amazon. Um, image One's uh, franchise website is imageonefranchise.com and one is spelled out. Uh, and then on the consumer side, if they want to look at what we do for the uh, the, the franchisees websites, it's image1usa.com. And then they, they can see the individual locations for the what 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 websites get up for the individual franchise owners. Um, but it's image1franchise.com. There's a um you know a, a form fill there that you can fill out and get the information um to us so that we can can reach out to you and, and get you more information about image one. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I highly recommend it. I again, I love these conversations. I could tell you, it's it's a, a brilliant model. It might sound straightforward and simple, but brilliant. I could tell it that. Um, and you'd be you'd be uh, reach out to Tim and his team. I can tell you, they will help you, and they will they will send you down the right path. Your commitment to franchising, Tim. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate your commitment to innovation and uh, and growing business. So, thanks for being on the show and and sharing today. Thanks for your time. I appreciate the invite.